Lucis, a peaceful kingdom of great magic kept safe by the power of the crystal. And Niflheim, a military empire of vast machinery made strong by the might of its magitech. Long has war raged between the two. The stalemate was held only by Lucis's magic wall, which drains the king of his life year by year. But, knowing his strength is fading rapidly, King Regis has consented to a treaty with Niflheim, though the armistice will come at great cost. Now, on the edge of reluctant peace, King Regis has sent away his only children, Prince Noctis and Princess Rena. One is sent to be wed for the union of their two nations. The other is sent against her will, for reasons she does not yet fully understand. Something is wrong. What? With father. Oh, I thought you meant something real. I mean it, Noctis, didn't you notice? Notice what? Uh, father. Don't usually pay that much attention. You seem to have a cup. Ow! Keep your hands to yourself! He was worried. And you were insufferable. He's always like that. The same could be said of you. No one asked you, Specs. He's not. He isn't usually so grave. You didn't think that seemed weird. And he kept calling us back, like he wanted to say something else, but couldn't. Uh, give it a rest, Reyna. If you're gonna do this all the way to Altisha, I'm putting headphones in. Pass me an ebony, would you, Gladio? Yeah, sure. Don't know how you can drink that stuff, Iggy. Straight from the can. With neither cream nor sugar, usually. That's not what I meant. Take your last look at the Crown City. It will be some days before we return. Yeah, I wonder what's out there. Monsters? And demons. Really good looking girls. You'll soon find out. I can only guarantee that women will pay you no more attention in Altesia than they have in Insomnia, Prompto. Hey! <laughs> to go back. Huh? What for? Dad told you to stay with me anyway. He'd just send you away if you went back. <sighs> hey, Dad'll be fine without you for a few days. Seriously, and we'll all be back before you know it. <sighs> yeah. We get to see more of Lucis and go to Altitia. And eat Ignis's cooking? See Noctis in a wedding dress. You wish. <laughs> It's been some while. Do you remember the last time you saw Lady Lunafreya? About 12 years ago. That makes you... eight? You were kids. Hope she hasn't gotten her hopes up. Why not? <laughs> Calm yourself, Prompto. Try and keep it together when you meet her. Should expect to see a fine young prince. Tell me something I don't know. We don't have time for all that. But this is your wedding we're talking about, no. Do that too. <laughs> you really gotta calm down, Prompto. How do you feel about it? Dunno. You haven't even thought about it, have you? Oh, he has. Don't. Don't what? Nothing. Does your sister know all your secrets, Nut? Come on, tell us, tell us! Whoa! Whoa, hey! What's the road, Prompto? Me. Betray my darling brother, I would never. Yeah, right. <laughs> Prompto! Uh-oh. What do you mean, uh-oh? I think I know. And this is why we don't let Prompto drive. Hey, let's not go pointing fingers here. It just died. All right? Yeah, after you hit a rock. You broke father's car. I broke the king's car. I broke the king's car. I broke the king's car! <sighs> I believe it is safe to assume that he has more pressing worries at the moment. We'll just have to push her. There's a garage in Hammerhead.
And so began the long road out of the Crown City for prince, princess, and retinue. Though they had little concept of what lay ahead or behind, it was at least clear that this was not the bright and eager start to an adventure that some of them had hoped for. Father, how are you feeling? Old, but you knew that. And you, how are you feeling, my dear? I'm fine. My dear, if you cannot lie with conviction, do me the service of not lying at all. Have you arrived in Golden Key? No, Prompto broke the regalia. He was. That is my car, you do recall. Well, you should have given us a better one, because it broke down halfway to Hammerhead, and we had to push it the rest of the way. You pushed her? No one would give us a ride. Oh, that is hardly work befitting a princess when there are four strong young men around to do it for her. Dad. But we met Sid, and he charged us so much to fix it that we had to take work with the local hunters and chase down this monster just to make up the extra cost. I did warn you about Sid. I know, you're right. He's a curmudgeon. So that's where we are now. In the middle of nowhere, sleeping on a rock, looking for a monster to kill. Hmm. Camping is an excellent way to build character. <sighs> Dad. <laughs> and Noctis. How is he? Hmm. Asleep, probably. With everyone else. Everyone? And what does that make you? Nobody. Raina. <sighs> can't sleep out here. The sky is too black, and the night is too dark, and the ground is too hard, and... And I can't sleep without you here. I miss you, Father. I know, my dear. And I miss you. So very much. But you really must try to get some sleep. I don't want to hang up. Nor do I, my dear. Nor do I. He didn't ask me to, and he didn't hang up himself. At least not until I fell asleep in a camp chair and dropped my phone on the ground. I woke to a text from him which said, Sleep well, little princess. The next night we did the same, because the ferry from Galden Cay to Altissia wasn't running, and we had to barter for passage on a different boat by doing more errands. It seems royalty means very little outside of insomnia. It's like we're not even in Lucis anymore. On the third night, we stayed at the resort on the quay and prepared to set sail in the morning. Even though it was the first night, we had a shower and a soft bed in three days. All I could think about was Father. The treaty was meant to be signed that night. Father, answer your phone. Please, Father, please, please, please. Please, Father, please. Please, please let him answer. Let him be all right. You have reached the voicemail box of... He never answered. Somehow I fell asleep, eyes aching, head pounding and worn to exhaustion. I wish I had never closed my eyes. I wish I had never dreamed of the truth of what happened that night. For nearly as long as I can remember, I've had these dreams. Nightmares, really, but they show me things that will happen or have happened, or are happening. I can't really tell when it will be, just what. Father says it's some form of magic, almost the only kind I have, but I never could control it like he and Noctis control their magic. They aren't normal dreams. They aren't fuzzy and far away once I wake up. Once I dream an event, it stays with me forever. If 
first time it happened, I was eight. We were in Tenebrae for Noctis' health, and everyone thought I was only having nightmares because of what happened with Noct and that demon. But I didn't dream about demons. I dreamed of men with metal faces and glowing red eyes who fell from the sky, burning the forest of Tenebrae and killing everyone who stood in their path. I dreamed of my friend Ravens, who tried to protect me. But I didn't just see these things, I lived them. I was inside, standing right there, so scared I couldn't even scream, much less run away. Raina! Run, Raina! Find your father! Ah. Run! Don't look back, Raina! Just run! Hands grabbed me. I could hardly see through all the smoke, and all I could think was that the empty men had finally caught up with me. No! No! Raina. Look at me, Raina. Just me. Nothing else. See me. When I opened my eyes, he was there. And everything else was gone. No fires, or empty men. No Ravis. We were back inside, sitting in a bed in Tenebrae that I hardly remembered climbing into. F father Just me. <gasps> <sighs> it's only a dream, Raina. Was it a dream, Ray? No. It was just a dream, right, Dad? Yes, it was a dream. Just a dream. That was what he told me that night, what they told everyone the following morning. In the silvery light of Tenebrae during the day, I almost believed it. But when I stood in the same spot and saw the trees whole and unsinged, saw the skies clear of black ships and red engines, I couldn't shake the feeling that it was all real. And when I slept again later and dreamed the same dream again, I knew it was real inescapably real, down to every last detail, completely indistinguishable from any other reality I had ever experienced. That I woke in my own bed once more to have Father and the others tell me it was not so was only more frustrating. It was real, it was true, but so was the world in which everything was still intact and content. How could I possibly explain that both things were real when everyone else only saw one? They learned the other was real two weeks later when the empty men fell from the skies and set Tenebrae ablaze, just as they had done every time before. After that, we learned not to dismiss my dreams, but no matter how they plagued me in all the twelve years since Tenebrae, not one of them was as terrible as what I dreamed that night in Golden. Have you found your thief? We have, and that which was stolen has been recovered intact. Joyous news. I am relieved to hear it. Tell me, Your Excellency, how heavy a sentence does the crime of theft carry in Niflheim? Among the heaviest, although there is one exception. And that is? A Curious old law I still permit in the Outlands. A thief who escapes his captor can no longer be held to account for his crime. A warning to the victim. Never show mercy, lest you forego the hand of justice. Oh no, good king. Far from it. The treaty is now on the table. The countdown begins to this historical moment. It is a warning to the hand of justice itself. 
never to lose its grip. Unit one, secure the perimeter. Unit two, stand your ground. The crystal, they're after the crystal. Ah! Crystal will not serve you. Nor you, once I take it from this accursed city. Come, we must escape while we can. No, oh, Clarice. I fear escape is no longer an option. Clarice! Father. You have reached the voice mailbox. No, of... no, 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 no. Raina! We have to go back. We have to go back. If we leave now, maybe. Maybe we can still stop it. Stop what? What did you dream, Reyna? Father, I... I saw him die. He's not answering. We have to go back. Now hold a moment. There are three possibilities. The first is that your dream is of something that has already occurred. The second is that it has yet to occur. And the third, albeit less likely, is that it was merely a dream, correct? If it has already occurred, then leaving immediately will not help. If it is yet to occur, then we'd be charging blindly into what could be a volatile situation. We must wait and learn. But what if it happens while we're waiting? Then I dare say we would not make it in time. I will go down to the lobby and see if I cannot learn what, if anything, has passed an in insomnia. <sighs> then I'm coming with you. Of course. The lobby held answers for us, but none that I wanted. Here's your newspaper, sir. What does it say? No. 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 No, it can't be. It can't be. Reyna. Reyna! Ray, what? What is this? It's in all the papers. Insomnia Falls? Is this your idea of a joke? <laughs> I need you to calm down so I can explain. We're as calm as we're gonna get! There was an attack. The Imperial Army has taken the Crown City. As tree room tempers flared, blasts lit the night sky. When the smoke about the Citadel had cleared, the King was found... dead. But the wedding! Altisha! I know that was the plan. Yet the reports of the invasion are all the same. How could every headline in the kingdom be wrong? <laughs> Lies. If only. What else do we know? Well, then we can't be sure until we see it with our own eyes. And that means we have to go back to Insomnia. Might not be safe for us there. Might not be safe for us here. Turn back? Ray? Yes. We go back.
As fate would have it, they never reached the city. For better or for worse, an imperial blockade forced them to settle for a deserted overlook off the main road. From there they had a view of the Crown City, half obscured behind a screen of smoke. As to ceasefire discussions between the two nations, all provisional terms have been suspended in light of recent developments. Moreover, in the wake of news of King Regis's death, we've now received word that the Crown Prince Noctis, the Princess Reina, and the Oracle Luna Freya have also been pronounced dead. Keep it on. Don't bother! Hello? Kor? So, you made it. The hell's going on? Where are you? Outside the city, with no way back in. Makes sense. Makes sense? Are you serious? What about any of this makes sense? The news just told us we're dead, along with our father and Luna. Listen, I'm heading out to Hammerhead. About the king. It's true. <laughs> if you're looking for the whole truth, you know where to find me. Get moving. No. No. I should have been with him. I should have stayed. I have to go back. I have to... Ray. Ray! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Don't be an idiot, Reyna! You think stepping off the cliff is going to fix this? <laughs> he told you to stay with me. Remember? He said keep each other safe. <laughs> Safe. I had never really appreciated how much he sounded like our father until then. At the time, it was the only thing that kept my feet on the ground. We went back to Hammerhead. We had nowhere else to go, but we went looking for coal. It's stupid, but I kept thinking he would have something from Father. Or had been in it somewhere, and it fell. Hey. Glad y'all made it. No weather for driving, that's for sure. Oh, thanks. Where's Core? Uh, left to see to business. And left y'all a message with Papa. Yeah? Boss ain't sat still one second since he heard y'all were coming. Crystal, and the King's Ring, what they've been after all along. So all talk of peace was merely a pretext. They played my father for a fool. Don't talk about him like that. Don't kid yourself. Reggie wasn't born yesterday. Lucius got dealt a losing hand, and your old man played it best he could. He saw this coming a mile away, and he wasn't going to go down without a fight. He always knew. In the end, though, it just wasn't enough. You need something else, Dr. Cole. I can't even remember the last time I saw Reggie. Feels like a lifetime ago. Kor left a message. Said he'll wait for you in the tombs. There to the northwest of here. Just a short ways past the outpost. Find that first. So, shall we continue northwest or stay the night? <sighs> <sighs> I'm beat. My socks are all wet. Ray? <sighs> we'll go in the morning. But no way I'm camping in the rain. The trailer, then. I'll make dinner. Reyna. She's not gonna eat. I wouldn't bother. She didn't. Halfway through dinner, she did disappear, though. I found her right past the parking lot, sitting in the mud and building a little tower of stones.
Hey. Hey. Isn't that the stupid necklace you bought from that guy at the mall who couldn't stop flirting with you? Yeah. Now it's for father. It should at least have dad's name written here, if it's going to be memorial. Regis Lucis Calum. There. That's something. Have anything you want to leave for him? Uh... This? The keychain I gave you. Yeah. The moon is for Noctis, right? And the chain is for family. For family. You want to sleep? No. Me neither. Remember when we couldn't sleep way back? We used to sneak into his room. Yeah, well, we thought we were sneaking. We were pretty bad at it. You were pretty bad at it. I wasn't the one who always started giggling halfway through. <laughs> it didn't matter anyway. We could have slept in there every night. Yeah, but then it wouldn't have been quite the same. Not quite as special. We slept out there, in the dirt and the mud that night. The next morning we followed Kor's trail to the prairie outpost northwest of Hammerhead. We found him up on the hills, outside the first of many royal tombs that we would visit in the months to come. You want to tell me what I'm here for? The power of kings passed from the old to the new through the bonding of souls. One such soul lies before you. To claim your forebear's power is your birthright and your duty as king. My duty as king of what? Now is not the time to question your calling. A king is sworn to protect his people. And yet he only chose to protect one prince. Was that his calling? Forsake the masses to spare his own son? How long will you remain the protected? The king entrusted the role of protector to you. Entrusted it to me? Then why didn't he tell me that? Why did he stand there smiling as I left? How can you be angry with him? He did everything for you. How can you not be? He did nothing for you. He just took everything until your whole life was him. You have no idea. Gods, you lived with him nearly as long as I did, and you don't know the first thing about him, do you? I made my peace with having the leftover bits of time because I understood. I knew what he tried to give you, even if you were too damn oblivious to appreciate it yourself. I never held that against him. Well then, princess, why don't you enlighten me? Seeing as you've spent the past four years following him around like a damn dog and filling every need he ever had. Enough. Cease this. You two bicker like children while your kingdom burns. Your father passed this to you hoping you would find your way together. Do not disappoint him. You can shut the hell up too, Cole. Don't talk to me about what my father wanted. I know what you wanted. And you, the chosen king, the king of light, the true king. He was so afraid that you wouldn't get to enjoy a normal life later on that he spent everything trying to give you a normal childhood. I guess it worked, because you didn't even notice. Just like every other stupid teenage boy doesn't notice his parents. Just a mild inconvenience. He gave you everything. How could I be angry with him for loving me, for wanting the best for my brother? I wanted it too. Take your royal heritage, Noct. It's not for me. Uh, Reyna! There are monsters out there! I'll follow. I found her not far from the entrance, sitting on a boulder with her eyes fixed on the screen of her phone. Reyna. I took this picture of father two months ago. I believe I only ever witnessed that smile while he was with you on Noctis. Oh, it doesn't seem right. How could he be so happy two months ago and now... 
We were five when the crystal chose Noctis. I didn't really understand at the time why father paid him more attention, loved him better. You know that is not true. It is. I don't blame father. I know now. I know I shouldn't have said those things to Noct. There are things I can't tell him about what father did and why he did it. Someday he'll understand. What things? You'll understand someday too. I was 14 when I dreamed of Noctis' fate. When I was younger, my nightmares were all sharp and terrible. I would scream until Father shook me awake. Later, they grew more subtle, though no less terrible. That night, six years before, I was lucid and clear when Father woke me. I wished I wasn't. Ring, what have you dreamed, my dear? When darkness fails the world, the King of Light shall come. It wasn't stated that Noctis would purge the darkness with his own life, but you always knew. Have you told him? No, father. Please, Raina, swear to me you never will. I swear, father. Now there are two of us, you know. I will bear this with you. It is not a weight I would have willingly given you. All the same, it is lighter for sharing. I hope it was lighter for him. If I could relieve his burden, even marginally, I would gladly have carried worse knowledge through the years. Following the visit to the first royal tomb, the atmosphere was tense and thick, with bitterness and regret. While neither twin wished to admit their own missteps, both were aware of them more and more as the day drew them onward through an abandoned mind to the second royal tomb. As is so often the case between siblings, apologies were never exchanged, but they were eventually understood. Will she not join us? Doubt it. Don't think she's had one bite since the king. Nope. <sighs> Well, I thought perhaps if I made her favorite curry... Yeah, well... <sighs> Ray, you have to start eating again. No one else will eat my vegetables. And here I thought you were worried about me. Huh? Me? Worried about my dumb twin? You wish. Come on, eat this green thing. There are too many. Can't keep pushing them around my bowl. Tastes alright, I guess. Good. Because Specs put a ton of veggies in here. What is the very first thing you remember? Go on! What's the oldest memory you have? How am I supposed to know which early memory happened first? I don't know. Just guess. I don't know. Probably something to do with your father. What's yours? It's Dad. Those really old memories are all just images from knee height, mostly. I just remember standing on the steps of the Citadel and watching the regalia pull up. When Dad stepped out, he turned and saw me. Probably both of us. I don't know. And he held out his hand, so I ran to him. And that's sweet. I'm not in the habit of lying to Noctis, but I did that night. He meant to lighten the mood, and my oldest memory isn't warm and fuzzy like his. How was I supposed to tell my brother that my oldest memory is of standing in front of a crowd playing a violin, trying to impress Father, but Father was only looking at Noctis? How could I admit that the one thing I ever wanted was the one thing he always had so effortlessly? It never mattered how hard I tried, Father only smiled dismissive and asked Noctis how his day was. I couldn't tell Nox that without explaining that I knew why, and I couldn't explain why without breaking my promise to Father. So I never told him. Eventually I stopped performing with my violin. Father never seemed to notice. Though the night closed on a reconciliation between brother and sister, both continued to wade through their own doubts. 
Noctis battled a nagging suspicion that the crystal had chosen the wrong twin, while Raina struggled with a growing sensation of fitting nowhere at all. That they were united in their mourning allowed them to share those concerns with each other more readily. But for all their closeness, there were some things she didn't know how to share. I couldn't sleep that night. I don't think I slept well a single night in the next ten years. But I found some semblance of peace laying in the regalia and staring at the stars overhead, pretending Father was still with me. Why did you send me here, Father? If you knew, if you knew they were going to attack, why didn't you let me stay? I could have helped, I could have... Did you send me away just because you didn't want me to burn with insomnia? Did you really think I would just get over this? You know me better than that, Father. Wasn't I useful to you, Father? I thought I'd been. All those years I sat by his side, trying to make something of myself, trying to be worth something. For a little while it had seemed he needed me. Now I wondered if I hadn't just been deluding myself. The first time I sat in a council meeting with him, it was because I couldn't sleep. I was terrified out of my mind asking to see him while he was busy. Is my father within? He is, your highness. There has been no word of how much later they'll go. Open the door and admit me. Uh... I said, open the door and admit me. I must see my father. I... Yes, your highness. Princess Reyna, your majesty. Rain, what troubles you, my dear? I... I, I can't sleep. <gasps> hmm. Come along, then. You may sit with me if you are very quiet. Pardon the interruption. Pray continue. That was the first of many nights that I crept out of bed and went to him. Sitting in on so many meetings with nothing to do but be very quiet, I inevitably began to listen to the proceedings. At first they made very little sense. I didn't ask questions, not even after the meeting was over, because he was always busy and I wasn't certain that I was supposed to be listening at all. Eventually, though, he asked me, when I was older. So, tell me your thoughts. Father? You have been sitting in on my meetings for oh, four years now. Do not expect me to believe that you pay no attention. Oh, I'm not scolding you, my dear. It is a worthwhile education to have, even at such a young age. Well, the Outlanders have asked for more resources to defend against demons in the night. Is there no crowns guard outside? Not beyond the wall, no. Crown's guard protects the crown. The crown is within the crown city. What about the king's glaive? The king's glaive do extend beyond the wall, as I believe you know. Their purpose is to protect the people and all of Lucius, but their priority is to protect against Niflheim. They are trained to fight Magitek soldiers, but they do very well against the demons. They don't ask for much, do they? Who? Those beyond the wall? No. No, they very rarely ask for anything. But that does not mean they have no needs. So, if they ask for something, that must mean it's important, right? Quite so, my dear. They are very often self-sufficient. And that breeds all manner of pride. When a proud person asks for your help, that is a strong indication that they need it desperately. Come now. Dinner awaits. Finally!
Finally, I thought you got lost the way to the dining room. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh no, I'm afraid it was all my fault, my son. I took you on a grand tour of every floor of the palace. So then, what are we to do? Do they have any soldiers of their own? Of a sort. Beyond the wall there are hunters. Hunters take care of pests that most people do not have the training to deal with. Mostly wild beasts which prowl the open land, but sometimes they will also take on demons. We could reassign some Kingsglaive to protect the settlements. I don't know where the Kingsglaive is stationed at the moment, though. <sighs> anyway, I suppose it won't work. We couldn't give them enough Kingsglaive to keep everyone safe indefinitely. We need a more permanent solution. Indeed. What else can you think of? Can we give them Kingsglaive temporarily? And train more people? Teach the hunters, or, or make more of them? <laughs> Very good, my dear. It is uh, certainly a most tempting possibility, is it not? What in the name of the fruits, buddy, are you talking about? Language, Noctis. <laughs> Father lets me sit in on council meetings sometimes. You should come, Noct. Then you won't be so left out over dinner. No, thanks. The following day, Father collected me from my governess after school, ostensibly so that I could hear the council's conclusion on the problem. Instead, he pushed me to take the next step in my education on politics and rule. We simply cannot afford to devote the resources they need. We certainly cannot choose to do nothing about it. If Speak your mind, no my dear. To be given, then they must stand on their own. Clearly there are options between Address nothing them, and everything. Um, excuse me? Perhaps it is possible to reach a more permanent solution, without reducing the number of Kingsglaive at the Crown's disposal. If the Kingsglaive were reassigned temporarily, they could teach some of the people outside to fight the demons. A wise idea, Your Highness. Where would that leave us? You did well, my dear. That was the first time Father pushed me to speak before his council, but it wasn't the last. They did choose to abide my suggestion that day. As the years went by, I became a more and more frequent participant in the affairs of the kingdom, and a sort of honorary member of the council. Later, when I was well into my teens, I chose to take on an additional responsibility, one no one had asked of me, though at the time I believed it was the most important contribution I could make. Apologies for the interruption. Your Highness. Princess Reina. Good evening, Princess. Ah, uh, Reina. I think that was the first time, outside of the night I dreamed Noctis' fate, when I truly understood what the ring and the wall were doing to my father. I had never seen him so tired. Somehow, no one else seemed to notice, or else they did not care. I spent an hour trying to focus on the proceedings, but I could only sit beside him watching his strength wane for so long. <clears throat> Lords and ladies of the council, if I might interject. We could argue over deploying the king's glaive to this sector or that for hours, but the hour grows late and his majesty requires rest. I suggest that we adjourn this meeting until tomorrow when all our minds are fresher. Surely his majesty is capable of handling such affairs on his own. The king adjourns the council when it is complete, not his daughter when she wishes. His majesty is the only thing that stands between you, between all of us, and Niflheim's army. If you would like him to continue to support the wall, I suggest you let him have the energy he needs to do so. Your Highness. Leave us. This meeting is finished. My daughter and my protector. Hmm. I not anticipated. Such venom in tonight's meeting. Are you very cross with me? No, my dear. But surprised, that's all. And if you'll permit me to be completely honest, the slightest bit impressed. But you are tired. <laughs> I am that. Then I have no regrets. I thought not. Come. 
You have dismissed my counsel, and all that remains for my fierce guardian to do is to see me to bed. <clears throat> Does your leg trouble you? Mm. Father was little if not adept at dodging questions. We reached his room with my concerns still unanswered. Is there anything else you need? No, my dear. I will be quite all right. All right. Rena. Yes, Father? Have you finished your homework? Of course, Father. <laughs> Good girl. Now please, if you would grace your king with a kind kiss on the cheek to say goodnight to him, and then put yourself to bed. Good night, Father. I'll see you at breakfast. <laughs> Good night, my dear. Yes, I had thought I was useful to him then. Now I can't help but wonder how much of my life from before was a lie. Screen. 